What's happening, ladies and gentlemen of League Zero, and welcome to the countdown for Season 1, Week 2. This episode, I am joined by fellow staff member Zane. Hello. I'm filling in for Red X because he is nowhere to be found. Uh, he'll probably host this next week or something. <laughs> we'll make sure he gets a chance. Uh, and then our special guests for the week are Pixel Storm. A, hey, um, he's a main tank on Newt Newt. And then we have Tedison, a coach for Papega Friends. Hello. So with that, I'll hand it over to Zane for the week one recap. This is week two. Week two. Close enough. <laughs> no. Week two. Z9 looked rather dominant in their matchup against Hang Zhao Bark. Uh, some parts of the match were uh, very, very dominant for Z9. They uh, did some things on Rialto. <laughs> Unspeakable things. Very uh, good and bad, but very odd as well. Easy clap versus Chengdu Chads. Easy clap took the matchup 3 1. Oh, I forgot to mention, it was 4, 4 0 for Z9 uh, because they are very dominant. But Easy clap 3 1 against Chengdu Chads. I did not watch this one, but Easy clap have been preparing a lot and they weren't as confident going into this one. But they were still confident enough that they think they could beat them, which they did, which is really good. And last, or, yeah, last but not least for advanced division, Crest won 3-0 uh, with a draw on Hanamura against Newt Newt. Uh, Crest looked very dominant as well. Their main tank, uh, Shadow Dragon, was a stellar performance by him. And let's move on to the novice division. Double Cap rolled Bot Burgers 4-0. I did not watch any of the Novice League uh, matches, so I do not know what happened, but it just looks like a major steamroll. Uh, the Pega Friends 4 0 Rio Redemption. Rio Redemption haven't been, doing, haven't been doing that good this week. Uh, very unlucky. I forgot what they got last week. And Plat Chat lost 1 uh, 3 against One Trick Wonders. And One Trick Wonders looked very dominant last week in a reverse sweep that was insane. And I'll move on to player match, and that is Akronator. Right, so the player of the match, or players of each respective match, we're doing something a little bit different this time around. You may have noticed that we didn't send out the poll to the uh, the entire community to say, who is your favorite player from each match? Because uh, hopefully this will be slightly better. So we asked the teams who they thought their MVP was, and then we asked the casters and the rest of the production crew from each match to see who they thought performed best and <clears throat> who we got was uh, for Z9. The team's choice was Yusuf. It was a uh, relatively close call. The coach Meek had to be the tiebreaker because everyone was uh, voting for themselves. Cough. <laughs> but then we had uh, Reality as the caster's choice, so he'll be the honorable mention for today. And I think these two in particular were definitely the highlight for that entire game. They were setting up constant EMP shatter combos that just completely decimated Hung Chao Bark. They were not prepared and they really didn't deal with uh, either of those two very well. Moving on to Easy Clap, we had Dapper, the DPS slash Zarya player. As the team's pick, he's the player of the match. And then our honorable mentions go out to Jason DL and Chloe, the main tank and I believe main support, respectively. They, uh, I didn't get to catch that game, but from what I saw of their week one game, those three players were definitely distinguishing themselves. Dapper putting out an insane amount of damage. Jason, I believe, was the player of the match last week for Easy Clap. And nice to see that a support in Chloe uh, got to get their name on this. And then for Crest, Kuru was the team's choice, and Falcon was the caster's choice. Kuru is the DPS slash Saria player, Falcon is the D.Va player. <laughs> He's in D.Va Hell. Um, Kudul put out an insane amount of damage consistently on Zarya, getting a little bit over-aggressive at times, but usually it paid off. The team is right there to back him up. As usual, Crest having some of the strongest teamwork in the entire uh, league, and then Falcon just consistently eating, I believe, like four or five grabs throughout the entire game, two on Busan. So very, very hard uh, carries in that regard. Anyone have any comments about Advanced Division? Dapper, yeah, he plays on 30 FPS and he uh, dominates on Widow, uh, <laughs> from what I've seen. 30 FPS or something low like that, it's insane. And he does really good work at it. And that's all I have to add. 
And Falcon, I, actually, Falcon did an incredible job. Sorry. No, Fal for, Falcon is insane. For, for Z9, I only got to catch the last uh, Rialto match against uh, Hangzhou Bark, and I'm pretty sure it was Reality that was spawn camping Hangzhou on the Torb, uh, which I thought was very interesting. There was, it was actually pretty, uh, uh, it was questionable. To, to say the least, because they were off of the payload and they could have capped it. Oh yeah, but <laughs> I definitely, that was definitely something notable to go on into the future. Uh, I mean, w w when you're that good and, and you can do that, I mean, I think it's kind of hard not to do a little bit of, of a troll like that. But at the same time, like you, you can't do that. It's not. Yeah. It's not very fun. No, I think we're going to have to add some sort of addendum to. This specify that you can't like leave the payload to go bm like you can bm and spawn camp a little bit but you gotta actually finish the map at some point so expect some updates to the rules in that regard <laughs> moving on to the novice division however uh double cap the team's choice and the player of the match was mccree with a whole bunch of ease and then the caster's choice was king genius mccree is a dps i believe and from the few clips that I saw, they were actually playing some DPS, which was nice to see uh, from their week one reverse sweep, where they really stuck hard on goats until it was too late. And then King Genius, he's, I believe, like the first or the second pick in the entire novice draft. Uh, very, very hyped up main tank, so no surprises there. Moving on to One Trick Wonders, Arrow, yet another main tank, and he's actually the only person, both the team and the casters, chose him. So no honorable mentions this week for them. Uh, no surprise, like I said, I believe he was the first pick, and King Genius was the second. And he just consistently shattered the crap out of, um, who did they face? Plat Chat? Uh, Bot Burgers. Bot Burgers. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, Bot Burgers, I believe, has had some issues with their off tank. No, this week they played, around. uh, Plat Chat. They did? Week two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Wonders. Oh yes, yes, that's next. Oh yes, Wonder. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was misreading. Okay, and then uh, Papega friends. Their who is their player of the match? The player of the match is Nick. Who I don't recall what he plays. Is he main support? He Nick is a uh, he he's on break. He's, he's okay. Break jail. <laughs> but he plays uh, flex DPS. We actually did end up running a bunch of two 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 comps. Uh, there was one flank shatter from our main tank all Mike. And he on Reaper hit Q and and ended up killing five or six, which <laughs> uh, pretty much secured him that uh, position as as player of the match. And then we do have an honorable mention from the casters in Sebs, who I believe was honorable mentioned last week as well. He's a very consistent off tank from what I've seen. One of the more impressive divas in Novice. Anyone have any other comments for Novice division? Uh, I unfortunately did not catch any of them, so I cannot comment on any of them. But last week, or for the first week, McCree did pretty well. Even though I'm pretty sure they lost, but they did really well. Yeah, Double Cap was the team that got reverse sweeped in uh, week one. So I think coming into this week, they definitely wanted to put out a statement. And that 4-0 that against Bot Burger shows that they're, I think they're, they're back to, to try to win. Mm. I, I, I think if, if Bot Burgers gets 4 0 again, I think they're just going to turn into the Shanghai Dragons. If I'm just completely honest. <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to have we're going to have the Shanghai Dragons situation. They, well, they have been dealing with, I believe, their off tank Octo couldn't show up at least for the first week. I'm not sure about the second week. I didn't catch their VOD. I gotta watch that later. But they also had some issues with one of their players, uh, Zumam not showing up. He was very inactive recently, just today. They dropped him as of recording this. So uh, hopefully in week three they have a good idea of who they want to pick up. There are quite a few novice uh, free agents, so they should already be getting that list ready because they're down to eight. There are minimum eight members. They only picked up nine from the draft, and I think that's coming to bite, but bite them in the butt now. Oh, for sure. That being said, they do run a good Chengdu-style triple DPS. Well, the, th the thing about triple DPS, right, is that if, if the enemy team's goats is good enough, like, triple DPS can't work. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, th I think at the novice level, right, because like, obviously, even in advanced, I, I think triple DPS will work even though some of the advanced players are very high ranked. 
I, I think Triple DPS would be needed. No one's goats is that good. No one's just, no one's the shock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll put it that way. All right, and with that, I think we can move on to the guest segment, which Zane has prepared. So take it away. Okay, Tennyson, I have a, a question for you. A very good one, in All my right. opinion. Uh, since you are a Masters player, a Masters mm -hmm. main tank player, and you did not get picked up for an advanced team, which is unfortunate. You know, it happens. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel like to coach a novice team, since you have like way more knowledge in the game than the novice players? Co coaching for me was just a backup plan going into the league, because I knew that there were hundreds of players filling out application, and I knew that statistically the chances of me getting chosen were just incredibly low, despite how good I did in pugs or not. So I, of course I wanted to get drafted, but as, as soon as I read the, the list and saw that I wasn't drafted, I started typing coaching resume and I put it out and uh, Shash, who is a bigger friend the manager, uh, saw it and he uh, reached out to me and I pretty much started coaching the night that uh, the draft happened for advanced division. And I have to say, after doing it for multiple weeks, it's been way more fun of an experience. And I've met so many great people off of uh, Pepega Friends than I initially expected. I definitely think that uh, me being Masters and uh, all of the other players being uh, lower SR, Diamond or, or lower, that my knowledge of the game has been able to help the Pabega friends be so dominant in these games that most people didn't even think would be dominant in. But I, I just, I feel like without the help of the staff, the coaching staff, then uh, Pabega friends uh, individually, they're all incredibly talented. But I feel like as, as a coach, I really I tried my best to help them work together a as a team and uh, bring home some really impressive uh, victories. All right. Uh, what else? I can't think, apparently. I just <laughs> had it on my tongue. Unlucky. What was it? Uh, how is the synergy with your team? Like, you said they're very good individually, but as a team in itself, how well are they? How well do they bind? Our, I feel like we have a very, we have very high synergy. We've uh, been scrimming quite a lot. Uh, I've been making sure that most of our subs are getting playtime, while at the same time prioritizing uh, the main roster to the point where pretty much everyone has synergy. And not only that, but the players themselves get along with each other, which I think is incredibly important for a team in general. If, if your team isn't having fun with one another and they're not having fun playing the game, then they're probably not going to perform well. But I can I can tell everyone on our team uh, really enjoys playing for the team and they enjoy uh, hanging out around with each other. And I definitely think that is one of the factors that, that is helping us win these games. That's really good. Uh, team bonding is very important in yes. subbing in all your players. Very important as well. Because some people don't like being benched and then they'll be like, oh, I don't want to be on this team anymore. And then they'll yeah. be sad. But that's really good that you're doing that. And mm. let's, uh, that's all I have to add for that question. I do have Thank actually you. a few oh, questions because now I'm curious. <laughs> so I did see a few comments after you guys completely slaughtered Rio Redemption. And to be honest, I think I predicted Rio to win that because I uh, see them as a, <laughs> I see them as a very mechanically gifted team. But I, saw, I see you guys still as a very uh, high game sense team. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious what sort of drills you have to practice uh, swapping comps or switching rotations because from the clips I've seen of that match against Rio, you guys had it down like spot on faster than some of the advanced teams we have right now. So what Honestly, sort of drills do you do? We, we just play GOATS. <laughs> that's, that's all you have to do. We play GOATS. I've taught my team a, a, a play style in which... Uh, Lilithi, which is our Lucio player, uh, when he notices that it's a good time, like if uh, the enemy team Zarya has already used herself and projected uh, bubbles, and or if uh, uh, Brig Pack is out, or if everyone in our team is healed up, 
he will call amping speed and we will all go in and uh, focus uh, the same target, uh, usually Hirain or whoever's overextended. And it's a strategy we've been practicing for a week now and it's been working incredibly well. And I think that's probably the reason, that's probably the reason that uh, there's actually uh, the fourth round or the third round, I think on Eichenwald uh, where we we believe that it was uh, Rio's turn to pick the map, and they picked Eichenwald, which was very surprising because we knew that King's Row. Well, pretty much everyone knows that King's Row is is like the favorite map of pretty much every team, and they took a while to pick that map. And we think the reason they did that is because they were afraid of our goats, and they didn't want to try to uh, run a ghost map into us and try to beat us off of it. So. Uh, knowing that, we just we, we hadn't practiced Eichenwald as much, so uh, we just stick to our roots and we played defense first and we ended up full holding. And uh, they ran a bunker comp on defense and I had also, we haven't just played GOATS, I taught them a composition that is incredibly strong against bunker comp. It was the Winston Diva with the Genji Sombra, because if Sombra uh, EMP doesn't win you a fight, then uh, Nanoblade definitely will. So I taught them how to how to play that, uh, and we ran it against the bunker comp. I didn't even have to, to say anything, and we uh, ended up uh, winning that fight or winning that 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 match. So overall, the the coaching drills that we've been doing is just pretty much goats, but we've also been doing some selective, specific comp uh, choices against uh, spe specific comps that other teams would like to run like the like the bunker and i think that paid off incredibly well okay do you have any more questions zane or <laughs> i i think i have one i had another one that i once again forgot but do you think <laughs> you guys will 4-0 one trick wonders again or not again but do you think you'll 4-0 them or at least get a win i definitely think that our team can pull out a win against one trick uh, I definitely think it's going to be probably the closest match next week because One Trick are incredibly talented. Arrow, their main tank, is really, it's just a really solid main tank. But uh, I think as a team, we can overpower them if they just, if we just keep our, our comms clear and we uh, work together, I think we can definitely beat One Trick. Good. Very good. Okay. And I have a question for Pixel Storm now. Uh, since you guys are 0 and 2, and people were power ranking you as a higher up team, how do you feel about this? Well, you see, the the, the thing is, is, right, we haven't had a lot of well, not that we haven't had a lot of scrims. We've had scrims, but we've had issues with roster consistency in, in terms of showing up. Which, to be honest, it wasn't that people didn't want to. It's just a lot of people were wearing finals, and I know our uh, Eoc. Was, uh, was in finals and had prom this weekend, so he, he couldn't show up at all. But yeah, th that's the main reason. We don't have a lot of synergy really built up. Like we have we have synergy from previous rosters because we have Bun and Baz who were on Flat Chats last uh, season of League, of League Zero. So they have there's already some pre-built synergy in our roster, but we just we don't have enough with all the new, uh, new players that have come in. Do you think you'll build up synergy uh, later on? Like if you scrim more or when you scrim more? Oh, for sure, for sure. We we've already we we went, after we took we, we took our loss, our, our chat basically lit up and we went over every single thing that we did wrong. We we, we made up a plan for scrims. We're, we're gonna go hard. We're not, we're not gonna give Z9 a, a very easy time. Hopefully, you don't get four up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Even though you're not a coach, uh, do you see like anything wrong like in anybody's play style? Uh, I see. A couple things are wrong. Like, it's mainly just positional errors, and that's just due to because we haven't played with each other a lot. Like it, it, at, at the end of the day, like everything that's wrong with our team, it comes down to synergy between each other. Uh, I don't have any questions, any more questions that I can think of right now. I could actually sort of add on to what Pixel Storm said because prior to filling in here, I was actually streaming a VOD review of Crest versus Nutu. 
and I was uh, I was noticing a lot of the same things he was saying. There was a lot of what seemed to be from a third person perspective, a lot of comms issues, a lot of positional mistakes. Like, oh, this, you know, if they had rotated this way or that way, they would have had a better chance to take on Crest in a more favorable manner. And then just like old economy, which again kind of comes down to comms. So I think Newt Newt still has that potential that people saw in them. I, I think if they could actually just get a scrim in every once in a while, and I am in their server, so I see how much they actually scrim, <laughs> then uh, they could really start to pop off and make the second half of the season come to life. I saw you got subbed in last week, Pixel Storm, for uh, off tank, which is oh, not your role. And you did a really good job. You ate two grabs. Um, tell us more about that. That, that, that was surprising because I didn't even know Lux had to go. I, like I, I, I was, I was, uh, I was in, in the washroom and then I came back, and then I saw that I got subbed in, which I thought was just weird. Why, why Lux left? But then like playing in that game, like that was a very high level game. I was not used to that at all. Because like down like in, in diamond ranks, I'm not used to that level of coordination from the enemy teams. And like Crest just had unbelievable amounts of like they they must have scrimmed at least three hours every single day. <laughs> at least. There's no way. They were so coordinated. Yeah, but I've, if, I've seen every gameplay. If, if I'm being completely honest, the first grab, uh, I did intentionally eat that one. That was a that, like I, I, I saw the Zarya pushing up, I just held Matrix. And the second one I didn't even know I ate it until I watched the bot after. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know. But, and I mean, it's probably due because like the, the point where it was, it was like at the end of the match and we were kind of all just tilted a little bit because I mean, obviously we got 3 would It's not very, not very fun. But the comms were, were pretty messy and scrappy by the end of it. Unlucky. And apparently one of your teammates had a snake in their room or something like that. Yeah, uh, Widow, Tell us Widow, a little Widow. more if you can. <laughs> I think it was Widow is Blue. Yeah, there was a snake in his house and... Uh, he, he just left, and then I saw a message from a, from our Discord server that said uh, that he might have to call Animal Control. So, <laughs> oh, that kind I of hope snake. He's, I hope he's okay. We haven't heard from him since. Oh, no. So I no. really hope he's okay. Um, but yeah, that, that is really unfortunate. Does he live in, like, Florida or something? I, I, I think so. Oh. <laughs> but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was uh, that was kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did pretty good for uh, not expecting to get subbed in. I mean, yeah, for not expecting, expecting to get subbed in and also not playing my main role. <laughs> <laughs> but, like the, the thing is, then again, like off tank and main tank, like if you can play main tank pretty well, like off tank is it's not the same thing, but you just follow your main tank around. Like it's not it's it's not difficult to pick up if you already left the main. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Uh, do you have any more, Acne or Tedis? No. I'm, I'm all good. Alright. Uh, now we can move on to uh, week three predictions. Okay. Uh, which is halfway to uh, free agent pickup. So keep your eyes up yep. for that. We are just about into free agent pickup. But, anyways, for the advanced division, we are completely in agreement, which I don't think that's ever <laughs> happened before. We all predict Z9 <laughs> to win, and then Crest to win, and then Easy Clap to win, which uh, it shouldn't shock too many people if you've been following the league standings. All three of these teams are beginning to distinguish themselves as the front runners. I mean, to... I think the, I think the, the Crest and, and Chad's game, I think that's going to be, it, it'll be close. If Crest can, can work with their issues that they have now, I definitely think they can, uh, or Chad's can work with the issues that they have now, they can definitely beat Crest. They have they have the talent. They oh, have, definitely. They, they definitely have the talent to do it. It's just a matter of if they can actually do it. Which if, if they get more scrims in and they just become friendlier with each other, <laughs> I think like the, then they can, they can fully beat Crest. But then they but wouldn't it's... be the squeaker squad anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it, it all it all comes down to that. But at the, at the end of the day, I don't know if they can fix that problem within a week. I don't, I, I don't know if they're able to do that. If Chengdu Chaz can like uh, focus down on the Crest main tank because he he was aggressive on Winston when I saw him. He farmed primal in like a minute or so. It was insane. Yeah, Shadow, yeah, Shadow Dragon is really insane. Like, so Winston if they can punish him, then uh, they have that chance to uh, maybe win. But I still think Crest will win. Hmm. Okay. Crest definitely shows some of the highest tier of coordination and teamwork that I've seen in the entire league. 
Oh, so sure. It's going to be hard. Have, um, they have three coaches, one for each role. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, are, they are not messing around. They are going hard. They're and essentially the Papega friends of Advanced. <laughs> it is scary how, how hard they're going. Yeah. And when I saw their team roster get picked up, it was all just like unknown names to me. So I was like, okay, I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know how they'll perform. But look at them, they're doing great. Like unlike every other team, uh, I know I know at least a few names on each team. But they just came out of nowhere. Oh uh, yeah. It's very good for them. Well Ozzy was screaming. Well, with... you know, Good. <laughs> related to, to, to last season with Ozzy picking picking the team for Nunu, like a lot of them like they weren't exactly no names, but you didn't you didn't really hear about them too much. And then there they were at fourth place just outside of playoffs. So they definitely they, 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 Ozzy has, has an eye for, for talent, I think. Yeah. Like, hidden, hidden yeah. gems. And he was scrimming with them, like, from, I think, day two after the player signups came up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was still a gamble that he was going to get them on the team, but he got, I think, 90% of them on the team, and it shows. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it definitely shows. Because I know for uh, when they're picking up rosters, they're just going after either the names they know or they are like re they're good friends with, have connections, or people who like really perform. And some people like their main tanks this way or another way. So Crest just did it a different way. Hmm. Moving on to Novice Division, however, we have a little bit of dichotomy between us. Uh, for the most part, seeing myself and Tedison pick Platchat to beat Botburgers, but Pixelstorm chose Botburgers to win. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on that. Well, if I'm being completely honest, uh, I haven't watched that much of Novice, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know a lot of it, but, but both of them have been... Uh, in, in a sense, rolled in their games. Yeah. <laughs> just looking, at the, just looking at, 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 the, at the scoreboard, just looking at, at, at the peer stats. But I, I, I honestly, it, it's, it's kind of just, just the whatevers. Like, mm. I, I just think they're going to win. I don't know. There's, there's, no, there's no real thought behind it. Both of those teams actually are very interesting to look at because Platchat seems to have like zero coordination. And then Botburgers seems to have an issue with getting the players that they actually want to show up. So I think Botburgers has the higher ceiling, but mm -hmm. Platchat has the potential to have more teamwork. I don't know, I could know, I'm in their server, but I don't know at the moment how much they're doing in preparation. But I mean, I, I think another thing you have to look at too, even with the scores, is like if you look at the, the teams that uh, that they went up against, like Ballburgers went up against Avenke against uh, Rio. Rio's pretty solid, pretty solid team. They look really synergized. Like Platchats versus Pepega Friends, like Pepega Friends, obviously a top tier team. They 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 look fantastic. And even in week two, Ballburgers goes up against Double Cap, and Platchats goes up against One Trick. Like it, it, it's not really. The first two weeks, it hasn't really been fair in a sense. The teams that yeah. they've come up against. Plat Chat's opponents for the first. Sorry. Uh, no, no, no. Plat Chat's opponents for the first two weeks. Plat Chat's opponents for the first two weeks were incredibly difficult. I think they had the first two weeks, probably the hardest roster in the first two weeks. And I think that's why, statistically, they're probably the one of the lowest ranks down there with Bot Burgers, but I definitely think that they have more talent than Bot Burgers, and I think that they'll win that game. As long as they can not tilt, because I have seen them post-match, and they have definitely been tilted. <laughs> so I, I have not been lucky enough to see that, actually. It's only a few of them, but they tilt pretty hard. <laughs> Anyways, moving into the second match, which is Double Cap versus Rio. Again, actually, all three, uh, all three of us saying myself and Tedison chose Double Cap and Pixel Storm chose Rio. I will say before I ask Pixel Storm that I think this will be a close match. Double Cap seems to have pretty good teamwork and solid uh, mechanics. Rio has very little teamwork and insane mechanics, so it's hard to say they're volatile. But Pixel Storm, why do you think Rio will pull forward in this? I mean. Rio was my team last last season, so like I, oh, I, can't, boy. <laughs> I, I can't back down on them. I mean, I, I, I gotta stick with them. But they also, like you said, they do have the mechanics, 
So if they can figure out how to get the mechanics, put them together in the right spot, then, then they can roll. It's, mm. it's, 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 if you think of, you can think of Rio as Chad. They have all the talent, they just gotta figure out where to put the puzzle pieces. It's kind of like San Francisco Shock Season 1. <laughs> yeah, exactly, actually. Actually, I think uh, one person who's been severely overlooked on Rio is their main tank, Werner, or Werner, I'm not entirely sure how it's pronounced, but yeah, he's, he's he is, he's insane, and I've not seen that many people talk about him. Like, I think him versus King Genius will be a very telling matchup. No, for sure, for sure, because King Genius, I played against him in, uh, in, in Pugs a little bit. He was, he, he, he was very good. He, he, he knew his positioning pretty well, I think. In, in terms of that, like he, he knew when, when to push hard and when to just completely back off, which is always a good trait in main tanks, because if you don't know how to do that, you're going to end up feeding your brains out. <laughs> and then you, you just lose every fight. But if, if like, if both Warner and King Jesus, like, they're pretty evenly matched, to be honest, from what I've seen. Yeah. Personally, from, uh, the last, from my last week's match against Rio, uh... Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if it's just because of how well our team worked together, but I our first, the very first map on uh, Li Zhang, we played uh, Yam, who's actually our backup's main tank, and even he played uh, excellingly against uh, Werner, so I'm not sure if it's, if it's just uh, kind of bias, but I don't know if, if Werner is going to live up to his hype, personally. Hmm. I mean, we'll have that's to the thing, there hasn't really been that much hype around him. <laughs> yeah. So he's a li little bit of a sleeper. I've, I've heard quite a bit, personally. You gotta get that Twitch copy and paste in Shav, I never really know his name. <laughs> <laughs> Politics. <laughs> and moving on to the last match, of course, we have a little bit of bias in this one, which is Papega Friends versus One Trick Wonders. Uh, Zane and Tedison, unsurprisingly, chose Papega Friends, and <laughs> myself and Pixel Storm chose One Trick Wonders. Uh, Zane, we'll start with you. Why do you think Papega Friends will win this one? Uh, okay. I think they will, but it might be a little close, like 3-2 again. Because last time One Trick Wonders faced in mean, week one, or that's why I saw, they were down 0-2 and they didn't really seem like that well formed. But when they put in the right players, they looked really well. But Papega Friends can just counter that and like disengage your main tank. It'll be an easy win for Papega Friends. And Papega Friends has been doing really well this uh, these past two weeks, so that's all we gotta do. Hmm. I think I'm very cautious about saying One Trick Wonders for this, not just because Tedison is in the call. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's nothing personal. You can you can you can you can trash but, talk um, for all I care. Honestly. No, it's it's definitely not trash talk. Hell, I was one of the people who. I think I placed Papega Friends at like 4th or 5th in my preseason power you rankings. You definitely did, yes. I, they were down there, <laughs> and you guys have proved me wrong at every single turn. I truly believe that you guys are a top 2 team, but I legitimately have no clue if you're 1 or 2. It's between you and One Trick Wonders, so this 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 is the one match this week that I would recommend like everyone watch, because I think this is going to be a Clash of the Titans. But I don't know who's going to win. I, I'm saying One Trick Wonders because... I still feel like their their continued dominance will continue on even further, but I do think it'll be three two. It's going to be a nail biter. I think I, th I think uh, one trick has a has a lot of momentum going forth. Like just because they they had the reverse sweep in week one, which is already insane to do that, and then they have they have the carryover. They won they won three one against Plachats. So if, if if the momentum keeps going. I think they can win, but it, it, it'll it'll be hard against Papega Friends. Hmm. It'll be it, it'll it'll be a completely different matchup. Actually, let me check the charts. Who's technically in first? Okay, so Papega Friends is actually in first with map differential right now. I didn't realize that. That's impressive. <laughs> and then One Trick is behind with uh, four less map differential. Yeah. So wow, Papega Friends have not dropped a map yet. <laughs> I'm considering changing, but I'll stick with one trick. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna take a little hot take here and say that one trick reverse sweeps Pega friends. <laughs> that's, that that's would be, be my hot take. Insane. Two reverse sweeps in the same division by the same team. <laughs> <laughs> Your Boston uprising of the novice division. Oh god, <laughs> I feel like. We don't need to bring that heart attack level to League Zero. <laughs> <laughs>
but uh, Tedison, hours of casting. Let's hear your take on. Obviously, okay. you think your team's gonna win, but why? So I can I can break it down for you, honestly, player by player. Um, so uh, Nick, I've already talked about our flex DPS, our Brig. He's incredibly talented. Uh, flex DPS, honestly, I think his DPS is probably one of the most o- overlooked in the le- in the uh, in novice. Uh, Schaffler is our Zen player, who is honestly the Jonak of the Novice League, in my opinion. <laughs> he is consistently getting early g- game uh, picks that just force either the team to to go into us and use ults in a fight that they probably won't win anyways, or them back up and have to wait longer. Um, Lilithi is incredible with comms. His Lucio is incredibly good. Um, All Mike, our main tank, is has... Over over the last two weeks, improved significantly. I've noticed it. It's incredible. Uh, uh, Sebs is our diva player, who's you've already talked about, is incredibly talented as diva. He's manages to get massive bombs even even when there's no grab or shatter to back them up. I I don't understand it, but it works. Um, and lastly, magical is from what I've seen, the best Zarya in novice. His his tracking is incredible. And his game sense and knowledge is also really top tier. And I think individually we we are we would dominate. And as a team, I think if we can stick together and focus up, I think we'll. we'll I think I definitely think this match is going to be incredibly close. But I do think we we'll, we can pull it up, pull it out. Hmm. And I would also like to point out. I just remembered that. Uh, I think the very first episode of the countdown, we hyped up Ulfgar from Winter Wonders. So this is also going to be a battle of what's easily considered the best coaching staff in novice division as well. <laughs> Both teams have been hyped up. Yeah, so, so this is definitely gonna be the one, one, the match of the week, even from advanced. I, oh I yeah, definitely the match to watch. I think so too. I would definitely agree. Yeah. yeah. Just don't get reverse swept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll try. But anyways, that's, uh, unless anyone else has anything to say. Nope. Okay, so thank you all for tuning in to the countdown. If you have any suggestions of what we could do even further, I'm going to try and edit in the little Discord talking animation so you can see who's talking. But at this point, I'd hope you know our voices, or at least mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, Zane, do you have any closing statements? I'll just go down the line. Uh, thank you to Pixelstorm and Tedison for appearing on the countdown. That's all I have to add. Pixel Storm, do you have any closing statements? Real redemption for novice. We're, we're <laughs> gonna win it. You're gonna win it. They're a sleeper. Uh, Tedison, do you have any closing statements? Um. So, I. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we've got for today. Tune in next week, next Wednesday for week three, where we can recap all the insanity that's gone on in week three. And until next time, peace nut.